Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can test your domain logic when you're building a core data application. Now you can already see a lot of code in front of your screen. This is my app, which is a budget app. So I'm going to show you that how you can add a new testing target and how you can start testing your domain logic. Now in your actual application, um, you should be either doing TDD or whenever you are writing the feature, then right after that, you should be testing it. But this is kind of like a different story. Uh, I'm going to be adding tests at the end, which is not really common, but at least you will learn how to add tests to an existing project. Now, before we start on the project itself or adding testing, it will be a good idea to at least take a look at the project. You can see it's a budget app. I have different budgets over here. Let's say vacation, groceries, and all that. I'm going to go ahead and select groceries. I can go ahead and add a new expense. And all the expenses are at the bottom. They have a quantity. They have a particular price. And I can go ahead and add an expense over here, which is, let's say, title can be, if I'm adding a new expense, uh, maybe I'm one Apple. And the amount, let's say, well, the amount means like how much it costs. And let's just say that I'm going to go ahead and add like two apples. Okay. Okay. So over here we have apples, which is two. I believe it costs $10 for apple, which is pretty expensive. And now it is saying $20. All right. So what we want to do over here is you can already see some of the mistakes, right? I mean, because we haven't really written any test, you can see one of our mistake is the spent. If I'm spending $20 on the Apple and $66 and $10, then spent should obviously not be $17.50. It should be the sum of 20 plus 66 plus 10. So this is definitely wrong, all right? And what we're going to do is we're going to write a test and we are hopefully going to fix this also. All right, so right now it's not fixed. If I go and show you this particular logic, you can see the logic is right there, spent, and we have expenses. And one of the things that I didn't take into account is the quantity. So this amount should be multiplied by the quantity also, but we're not really doing that, all right? And we are going to cache that Obviously, now you already know, but we are going to cache that with writing our domain test. The domain test basically means the tests that are testing the models. We have the budget model, we have expense model over here, and all this logic that you have inside these models. Now, this is the heart of the application because this is the logic that's going to dictate the how much you spent, how much is remaining, I mean, these are very important stuff and domain is considered the heart of your application. So how do we add the test to test this out? Now, you already know that there's a problem with the spent part, uh, but I think when we're gonna write the test, then the test is also going to tell you the same thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new target. And let's go ahead and search for test. If you search for test, you are going to be presented with UI testing bundle or unit testing bundle. We are writing unit test. UI test basically means that it has to be end-to-end -end test. We're not really going to write right now, but unit testing is fine for now. Okay, the name of the product is budget app test. That is fine. And now you can see at the bottom, as soon as we add the new target, it is added. And we can open up the budget app test. There's not really not much going on over here. This is all the default code that comes uh, anyways. So I'm going to remove some parts of it. And maybe even we can remove this part. And maybe even we can remove the throws. Okay. So what are we trying to test? Well, we're trying to test the budget spent. So you can name this any way you want, but I'm just going to say budget spent. Okay. Well, since I'm using core data, 
I need to access the core data provider and manage object context and all of those things. All of those things are inside the budget app, which is a separate module. And currently, I'm inside the budget app test module. But what we can do is in the budget app test module, we can perform an import, not using the import, but using the testable import. So testable import. And this means that for testing purposes, we can actually start using all the different classes and stuff that is defined inside our budget app. So that is pretty cool. Now, if we look at our core data provider, you can see that we have the core data provider over here that provides you the context. And there's also a function like in memory falls, which means that it can go ahead and create your actual, you know, the core data context or the core data in memory. It's not going to be persisted to a physical storage like SQLite. We can use in memory for our application, which is kind of small. Uh, I think it's always a good idea to be as close to the production environment as possible, which basically means that as your application gets larger, you should be testing on the actual, you know, the actual persistent storage, not in memory. But our application is quite simple, so we can just use in memory for now. But I think it will be a good idea to not use in memory, but use an actual storage. And after the test is completely run, then you delete the stuff that you put inside the storage so that the next test, when it runs, it is not passing or failing due to existing data. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do over here is I'm going to try to create a singleton. So a static let and we'll have a shared property over here, which will be core data provider. Okay, so that's what we're going to be a core data provider over here. And now since I have the core data provider, I can go ahead and create a new test property. This is going to return us the, well, core data provider. And we can create the core data provider with in memory true. So that is something important that, and that we'll have to keep this as static also. Okay. Okay, so we have created the shared, which is just going to create an instance of core data provider. And we have created this test. Now, if we're creating this shared, we are basically saying that, hey, the only way to create an instance of the core data provider is by shared. So what if I go over here and make this initializer private? What happens then? If I go ahead and run this application, it is going to tell me a lot of different errors because now you can see that everywhere we were using the initializer. So we can't really use that anymore. So I have to say core data provider dot share dot context. And this might be a lot of different places. Over here also you can see that with core data provider, we will go ahead and say shared so that we are updating our code correctly. Great. Let's go back to our test. So this is our test. Now in our test, we currently don't really have anything. So what if I go over here and simply say context equals to core data provider, and I can access the core data provider because of the testable import. So this allows me to access all the different classes and you know all, all of them that are defined with public, uh, or well, not really public, but if you go over here, you can see that all these classes that are defined inside that module, we can access it, okay? Core data provider dot shared dot, well, it doesn't really have that property that we wanted, right? I mean, I think we, we wanted the test. So I think I will say core data provider dot test dot context. So this is for testing purposes. It's going to create your uh, database in memory. That is what we wanted. Now, once we have the context, let's go ahead and now create the budget. 
Okay, how do we create the budget? Well, budget equals to budget. And budget is obviously a model class that is automatically created because of the budget app model. So this is our budget entity. We also have expense and we also have tag. So all of these are there. Let's go back over here to our test. So budget, we're going to pass in the context, which we already have context. And now we can say budget.title equals to, let's say, vacation. Budget.limit, like how much do you want to spend? Well, let's say $200, so like a cheap vacation. And date created, we can say date over here. That's fine. Let's see what else do we have in the budget. Uh, remaining, you cannot really assign. I don't think you can assign that. This is more of a computer property. And spent is the one also computer property. That's the one that we are going to be checking. And then let's go ahead and create an expense. So we will create an expense, which will be expense. And we're going to pass in the context. This expense can also have a title. So let's say I'm going to eat a burger or expense dot amount. Let's say the burger was, let's say $10 and expense dot quantity. And I ate like two burgers and expense dot. Uh, you can see that they have tags over here. I don't really think that I have to assign any tags and the date created. I can say it's simply the date. Now this expense is not really part of the budget or assigned to the budget at this point, but we can say add to expense and we can go ahead and assign it. Okay. The next thing that we want to do is to save the context, save the context. Because if we don't save the context, then nothing is going to be persisted to our in-memory storage because we're using test. All right, let's go ahead and build it. And now we can actually verify, right? I mean, what exactly are we verifying? Well, we're verifying that if I say XCT a third equal, um, I am actually verifying the expectation and the actual. So what is my expectation? Well, the spend should be 20 over here, like $10 multiplied by two. So it should be 20, I think. And I would say budget dot spent. I mean, that's what I'm hoping for. If my budget is $200 and I bought a burger, two burgers for $10 each, then I already spent $20. So spend should be $20. That's at least my assumption. Uh, let's go ahead and check where I can run this. Sometimes it just acts a little bit weird. Let's go and run this now. I think I just have to select the correct simulator. And these simulators sometimes can take a while to run. Okay even though we don't really care that much about the simulator, but that is our hosting application. So that is why, you know, it's going to launch the simulator. And we'll pause the video over here. And once the simulator is launched, we'll come back. All right, so our test finally ran and you can see that the test actually failed. And it is telling you that why the test failed. It's telling us that fail $20 is not equal to $10. So I was expecting that it will be $20, but budget.spend was giving us $10. So immediately at this point, you should be worried that, okay, hold on, there's something wrong with our code, right? So let's go to the budget extensions. And once you start looking over here, you may realize that, okay, we have the expense amount but it's never really multiplied by the expense quantity. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply by expense quantity because the price will increase. Obviously, the spend will increase as the quantity increases. After making that change, we're going to come back over here and we're going to run the test over here and try to see if the test is passing or not. So let's go and there we go. You can see the check mark right there it's telling you that the test is actually passing, all right? This is great, right? And all the tests, all of this is in memory. So the next time when you run your next test, 
uh, that will, you know, that will have nothing. So, so that's good. Like all the state and everything will be wiped out and you can kind of like start fresh, which is great. So it's nothing is persisted. It's only in memory. So the next test you're going to run, you know, everything will be great. So this is it. This is how you will write a test in core data for your domain models. Uh, domain models, which I explained, which are right here, the budget, the expense, there's tag also, but I didn't really have to create an extension for the tag because it doesn't really have any custom logic. Um, one of the questions you people always ask is, what do I test, right? What do I test? Well, if you're testing your domain logic, you should test everything in the domain that is available. Uh, so we have this budget model over here. I should probably test this exist function. I should probably test the spend, which we already did. Probably test the remaining also, definitely remaining also. And for the expense, uh, the total, definitely you should do the total over here also. Okay. Um, well, expense actually does have a property called total, which is amount multiplied by the quantity. Maybe we can refactor that also because this is amount multiplied by quantity. So maybe I added that particular thing and never realized it. Uh, but let's see if that works. I mean, that will reduce our work a little bit. Although I do like the clarity over here a little bit more that, okay, amount multiplied by double. But what if I say expense dot total, right? What happens then? And let's see. Let's go ahead and build it. And the great thing is that, that this time we do have our test to protect us. If we mess up something, the test is going to hopefully tell us that, hey, that logic that you just did, that addition that you just did, it's not working. But it looks like our test is still passing. So this is great. We, we changed some code to pass the test. We refactored it. We didn't really change the behavior of the test. The behavior remained the same but the test is still passing, that actually means that this total property is perfectly fine to use instead of writing amount multiplied by quantity, all right? Because that's what the total is actually doing. So that's great. Test kind of helps us out to figure this out a little bit. And since the test is passing, we can be assured that it is working. So that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you have enjoyed it and hope that when you're writing your next application, you should really pay attention to your domain model. That is the most important part in most applications. If you want to learn more about core data, then I just released a brand new course, the Core Data Bootcamp, and this is available on my website, which is awesomesharp.school. If we go to this particular course, you can see that you can access this course by a subscription of $25 a month, which will give you access to all the courses, right? the current courses, and also the future courses. Or if you just want to buy this individual course, you can also do that. And you can go ahead and definitely watch this promo video. This will cover everything that we are going to be learning in this course. Or you can just look at all the contents, right? I mean, this has tags that many to many relationship we have filtering migration updating expensive cloud integration transformable types and many much more and you can read the testimonials also frequently asked questions and then again the price or the membership usually people end up going with the membership because they get access to 22 courses 130 hour of content which is kind of crazy if you think about it right all of these courses for just 25 dollar a month which is crazy so Definitely check out awesomesharp.school. Share this website with your friends, with your colleagues. I'm sure they're going to find something that interests them because I cover a lot of topics. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next week.